In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Joseph Daniel Arnold at this Mass, and we also celebrate today the feast of St. Kateri Tekikwitha, uh, so a, the virgin of the, or the lily of the Mohawks, as she was called. So from back in the 1600s, um, someone who uh, was uh, born in what now is the United States, so um, one of the uh, natives present at the time, a member of the Mohawk tribe. She lost her parents at a young age, but she was exposed to Christianity, and she uh, took to that with a tremendous sense of dedication and resolve, wanting not only to be a good Christian, but also to de dedicate herself to virginity. Um, for this reason, she suffered a tremendous amount in her short life, but really was known for her remarkable holiness. Um, so we call for her intercession, especially as a, as a good patron, especially for the young. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins as we ask for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who desired the virgin, St. Kateri Tekakwitha, to flower among Native Americans in a life of innocence, grant through her intercession that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, they may magnify you in a single canticle of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The cry of the children of Israel has reached me, and I have truly noted that the Egyptians are oppressing them. Come now, I will send you to Pharaoh to lead my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? He answered, I will be with you, and this shall be your proof that it is I who have sent you. When you bring my people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this very mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today we can consider the virtue of humility, um, the idea of recognizing our unworthiness, um, to follow, uh, to, uh, to do what the Lord asks, our unworthiness to be called by him. And we have here this uh, statement that Moses says, he says, Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Um, so we might look at humility from this perspective. Truly, I think you could say Moses was probably the least likely of all the people to be called. Um, someone who had fled away from Egypt, he got as far away as he basically could reasonably get, fleeing to the land of Midian after being uncovered for having at one point slain an Egyptian. So here, Moses in all humility, um, says that he really is the, the last of those who should be chosen, the least of those to be chosen. Humility. Except I don't really think that this is humility here. Did I fool you? Did I draw you in here? This is not humility. This is actually cowardice, and I think an excuse. And this is an important, important distinction. Who is Moses that he should be sent uh, then to, to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses is the one chosen by the Lord. It's the fact that the Lord has chosen him. So it's actually, in many ways, quite arrogant for Moses to say what he said. Because if God says, you're the one I'm choosing, well, who is Moses to question the Lord? And yet that's, in fact, what he is doing. He's, in fact, questioning the Lord. Sometimes I think humility kind of um, is a pretense under which sometimes it becomes a convenient excuse not to do what the Lord is actually asking us to do. In this case, the much harder thing and the better thing is to accept the call from the Lord. But, oh, it's an excuse. Oh, no, no, not me. Not me. I'm not the one. I say this because I wonder if, in praying for vocations, if this isn't maybe one of the challenges that we face in, in our world today. So young people, and I'd say, are encouraged at different points. Maybe they sense the, the Lord calling them and pulling them in the direction of a religious vocation. And how quick, perhaps, one can make excuses. Oh, I'm not worthy of that. Um, it's always, oh, how humble, how humble, except just like Moses. I would say, if the Lord is the one calling, then it's really not for us to question the call. In fact, the, the humble response, the childlike response, would be then to say yes to the Lord. The childlike response, Jesus praises in the gospel today. Uh, those things that have been hidden from the learned and the clever and the wise. Oh, how wise. Oh, see how wise this person is. Oh, they, they oh, so intelligent a response. And yet the childlike are the ones who recognize the graciousness of the Father and the Father's will and are ready to follow after him. The wisdom of those that are childlike sometimes really standing in great contrast. If Jesus had just been praising certain towns, or talking about certain towns. He says, oh, you're so wise. Bethsaida, Chorazin, um, the Capernaum. So, oh, how wise you are. And yet, really, isn't it the child like here who are ready to, to follow the Lord, really, without question? They show real, true spiritual maturity, real spiritual wisdom. Let us pray for a greater willingness to say yes to the Lord, not to make excuses, not to find every reason not to do what the Lord asks, uh, not to reason our way out of these things or to, to make pretenses, uh, claiming not to be the person asked, but in fact, in fact, to recognize that the one whom the Lord calls, in fact, is the one 
who is to go. Um, let us not be afraid to say yes to the Lord when he calls. Let us pray in particular, especially for young people, that they will have that same courage to say yes if they are called in a particular way to follow after the Lord. We stand and present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, for the Holy People of God, for the humility to say yes to the Lord when he calls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for young people, that especially through the intercession of St. Kateri Katekakwitha, that they might stand fast and resist the temptations of the world that so often lead us to focus on fleshly desire. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for an openness and readiness to respond, especially among those called to a vocation, to a religious life, or to the holy priesthood. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a sense of childlike simplicity and wonder, to recognize all of the bounty that the Lord has given to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Arnold family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties, our freedom of conscience, and the freedoms of the Church, as we say. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Almighty and merciful God, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. <clears throat> may we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways. And through the example of St. Kateri Tikkigwitha, be renowned by growth in heavenly light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. 
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Kateri Tekakwitha, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion and the Behold, the bridegroom is coming. 
Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fleeting world, so that, following the example of St. Kateritek Teguitha, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Amen.